please pray with me. Gracious God, thank you for our children. Thank you for their reminder to us to enjoy. And Father, we pray that as we are reminded and do that more, that we will practice the things that you teach us, and they become our joy as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Every once in a while, someone comes up to me at a quiet moment at an event of some type and asks me a question. And in some form, the question asks this. Father Ralph, how do you decide what to preach for your sermons? How does it come about? The answer I give is multifaceted because there isn't one answer to that. But uh, today is a clear example of one type of answer I give. It doesn't happen often enough, often enough, but the start of the sermon today came when I read a particular phrase in the readings, and that particular phrase jumped out and grabbed me. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying out of my hands. And it was the rekindle part. I couldn't let it go. If you really listen to the readings today, there were many other pieces in there that could have grabbed our attention, couldn't it? And some of them, if I'd have grabbed one of those, the sermon would have been very long. One of the things I love about the Old Testament, this is an advertisement, is it, it doesn't, um, for you older folks, it doesn't gussy up life. It, it's filterless sometimes. And it takes a little bit of work on our part to really get the heart of it. But because it's so unfiltered, we can get right to it. But today I want to look at rekindle, because rekindle is a great word, and we can all picture it. You've seen a campfire that's beginning to wind down. The flames that were up here are now only up to here. And you've also seen a campfire with less energy than that. Those fires are the fires perfect for toasting marshmallows, unless you're one of those people who like to burn them. You've all seen fires that have very little flame and are losing their heat. And you've also seen fires that you are convinced are dead. But sometimes, if you work hard and carefully, you can revive the spark and get the fire going again. The Apostle Paul uses this analogy in his letter to a young pastor named Timothy. He's not mad at Timothy, nor is he criticizing. He is clearly sending a message of love to his fellow servant of God. You see, Paul knows what happens when we don't keep the fire of God burning brightly in our lives. And I don't know if he had our first lesson in mind as he was writing Timothy. I can assure you he was very aware of it. In our first lesson, Jeremiah laments the situation of God's people, the people of Israel. And the image for the people of God collectively is Jerusalem, the city of God. And when more intimacy and more heart is necessary to be communicated, the other name is used, and the other name is Zion. For Zion sits lonely. She is like a widow, her sadness is so great. She was a princess, and now she's a slave. She weeps bitterly, and no one comforts her. Even the roads to Zion mourn. Her fire went out. God had tried to get her to fan the flame, but she refused. Lights out. Paul wants to keep Timothy's fire blazing. Timothy has a gift from God that must be shared, and he will not be complete without living in the spirit of power and the spirit of love and of discipline. I get to go camping once a year with many St. Thomas folks. Everyone's invited. While there, I get to watch Dale Stagey with the campfire by his camper. He's an expert. I'm a city guy. I can burn most things. But he can do a fire. And there's rhyme and reason to what he does. 
He can keep the fire small, he can keep it large. He can make one that burns fast and one that burns slow. It's his knowledge and discipline at work. And if you add to discipline, power and love, we can keep the fires going that God started in us. All of us have experienced times in our lives when our spiritual lives, our spiritual power, our fire has gone cold. The excitement and joy we felt when God started the fire in us seems a dim memory and we feel far away from what Scripture calls our first love. The Apostle Paul is sending us a care package. He is lovingly reminding us to rekindle the gift of God that is within you. Today, we get to celebrate new fire as Wesley is baptized this morning. And when I've talked with folks about this baptism, some have asked, an adult's being baptized? Which makes me smile. I guess it's been a while. It is still very common and God's intent for God to spark a spiritual fire in a person. And if they have not been baptized yet, they present themselves for the sacrament. Today, I want you to listen closely to the words in the service, for this is a community event, this community. Wesley will make promises that as she keeps them, will keep the fire kindled. We will make a promise to help her keep the fire burning. That's what we do when someone is baptized. And we have many, many someones here who are baptized that promises have been made for. We are charged to recognize the gifts in each other and keep the fire burning. And there are many ways to do all in our power to support Wesley in her life in Christ. I wish there were more, but since she is moving away from us soon, she wants to be with her husband. Go figure. We will remember to pray for her. Paul remembered Timothy in his prayers constantly. God calls us to pray for each other. And as we pray for each other, it's the prayer that blows oxygen on our fires. Another way to support others in their life in Christ is to rekindle our own fire. Because one fire close to another fire makes a bigger fire. Some people have what we would call charisma. Of course, on Sunday morning, all strange words have to come from the Greek. It's a Greek word, and we take it to mean a, a gift of personal magnetism. A charismatic person draws people to them. The noun form used in the Bible is charism. St. Thomas has a gift from God through the Holy Spirit. Many gifts from God through the Holy Spirit. Charism. Paul's letter to Timothy has application not just for us as individuals, but for us as a church. St. Thomas has many charisms. And we have a long heritage. If you look at that letter from Paul to Timothy, he mentions Timothy's mother and grandmother, their faith. Yesterday, from St. Thomas, was buried Anna Holmes at 101 and a half years of age. There's still pictures in the parish hall from when she was in St. Margaret's Guild here at St. Thomas in the 1950s. We have a heritage of gifts, fires that have burned for a long time. We are graced with retired clergy, one of whom is the Rector Emeritus, who was here almost forever. But there are many here who remember the clergy before him. And the people who were here then, the people that we celebrate and have loved and cared for and have loved and cared for us and prayed for us. We have this godly heritage of fires that when we've come together, the gifts that God has given us. 
And Paul knows that when our fires and our fire burns brightly, people will be drawn to God. People will see the light in our worship. They will see the light in our welcome. They will bask in the light as we form relationships with them, as God intends. So be praying. That's what Paul did first and foremost, pretty constantly. Pray for Wesley. Pray for the others in our church who are baptized, which is just about everybody. Fan the flames of the gift or gifts that God has given you. Be praying. Open your eyes to the gifts God has given St. Thomas and fan the flames. In fact, I invite you, challenge you, to step into the flames. My favorite part of camping is when we all sit around the same fire, not when we all have our separate fires, but when we're around the same fire. Our wood is shared and the blaze is hot. Amen.